In Smash Bros, it's pretty common that Nintendo reuses a moveset. There are two different Marios, three different Links, and a whole gaggle of Marfs. But with just a few small tweaks to stats and hitboxes, these movesets take on a full and entirely new life of their own. There's no better example of this than Falco Lombardi. And there are few better examples of a learning and coaching platform than ProGuides.com. Hey guys, Bonk here, and ProGuides is your go-to resource for character guides, professional coaching, and courses from the best players out there. Be sure to check it out. Now, on to Falco. Falco was added into the Smash series in Melee and represented the start of a long-running design trend on Nintendo's part. Falco was, at first glance, a slightly altered version of Fox. Same-looking specials, same-looking hitboxes, and a similar fast-falling archetype. But Falco's moves all had different properties to them. Falco's shine wasn't as large and had a different knockback angle. Falco's lasers briefly stunned the opponent, did more damage, but came out more slowly. Falco's hitboxes were bigger and sent in different directions. He jumped much higher than Fox as well. At face, all these changes seem slight, but put them together and they create a character unlike any other in Melee and in Smash. Falco's hitboxes give him more vertical combos and tech chase mix-ups. His shine is better for aggression, giving him stronger offense but weaker defense. And then there's the blaster. In the early days of Melee, it was Falco's blaster that really set him apart. Even very early on, it was pretty clear that Falco's laser was one of the best projectiles in the game. Its speed and stun made it great for stymieing approaches and forcing shields or jumps. In the days before wave dashes, this was big because it took 15 frames to drop shield in melee. In the nascent beginnings of competitive melee, Falco's best player was the Sultan of Samitude, and he played Falco like a keepaway character. But obviously, Falco was destined to fly much higher. Falco's ascent would begin in late 2005 in the hands of a Japanese teenager who called himself Bomb Soldier. Bomb Soldier was a Japanese player who wasn't even well-known nationally. In person, he didn't really stand out, just a young and shy kid. But in the game, there was no player like him. Bomb Soldier shocked Melee's young scene by unveiling a new style of Falco, and he did it at just the right moment. In the Jack Garden Tournament, a Japanese event with Isaiah and Ken in attendance. Bomb Soldier shocked the entire audience as he tore through the very best players in Japan and arguably the world. He'd beat Masashi and Captain Jack and go on to fight tooth and nail with Ken in Grand Finals. His style was flat out gorgeous. No zoning, no retreating, only aggression, shines, and down airs. His set against Ken is unique for being one of the few early melee sets to still hold up in the modern day. It's definitely got its early melee moments, but it actually has a lot of hallmarks of the Marth Falco matchup still seen today. Interestingly, Bomb Soldier wouldn't become a major competitor in melee. According to melee commentator Toph, Bomb Soldier was less of a chillin' dude and more of a Zelgadis. Bomb Soldier, in a way, he was kind of like a, like a Zelgadis. Like, you see him in these videos and you're like, oh my god. Bomb Soldier's combo videos quickly became inspiration to a fleet of rising Falco who wanted to do those pillar combos. Starting with PC Chris. PC Chris was a top competitor in Melee's MLG era in 2005 and 2006. He gradually rose up to be one of the East Coast's best players, a top 5 player in the world, and the clear best Falco. He'd implement the combo game that Bomb Soldier pioneered, but he'd also improve Falco's neutral more and play overall better than Bomb Soldier did. Most notably, he'd win MLG Las Vegas, one of the biggest tournaments in the MLG era. Although, like many seriously competitive Falco mains, he'd use Fox too. Fox was similar enough to pick up more easily, but different enough to better cover certain matchups and counter certain styles. In 2007, another great Falco main named Zoo would rise up. Zoo was the true spiritual successor to Bomb Soldier in that he was a montage god. Zoo would expand the allure of the bird with his series of combo videos called Happy Feet. You might not realize it, but you've almost certainly heard about Happy Feet because you almost certainly have seen this clip. Happy feet, wombo combo. That ain't Falco. That ain't Falco. Oh, 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 Nope, they're not referencing the 2006 box office hit about dancing penguins. They're referencing Zoo's combo videos. Albeit ironically, because Zoo's the one getting combo. 
Zhou would never reach Melee's peaks, but he was notable for being top 50 caliber, and one of the best Falco mains for nearly a full decade. Falco would fare even better in the upcoming era of the Five Gods. With one god, PPMD, rising up in 2009, playing mostly Falco and then Marth as well. PPMD represented a different kind of Falco, and truthfully, a different kind of melee player. PPMD was not a fully analytical, optimal, and defensive player like Mewtwo King, nor was he a rushdown mix-up player like Mango. He was something more in the middle. He played Falco at a mid-range, using blasters and short hops to tease out a whiff, which he'd then punish. PPMD's biggest moment was his Apex 2013 win, but his earliest big Falco wins would be at Revival of Melee 2, where he'd outplace Mango. At about the same time, Mango was making his own switch over from Jigglypuff to the Space Animals. He'd unveiled the Falco, but he'd also unveiled a lot of other characters, including Mario. So it wasn't immediately clear he was serious about the character. In the 2010s, Falco had no shortage of representation, but if you're thinking about Melee Falco, you're probably thinking about Mango. Mango's playstyle fits Falco perfectly. Mango has a unique ability to push every opening to its limit, which works perfectly with Falco. Mango can use Falco's down air and shine to reset combos and tech chases on his opponents and extend his advantage endlessly. He's also incredibly good at mixing people up. He has a great sense of what will trick an opponent into giving him the hit. Mango's constant forward pressure is actually full of tiny, hard-to-spot feints and backwards movement. These movements give his opponent just enough room to make a mistake. There might not be a combination more popular in all of Smash than Mango and the Bird. PPMD's Falco was also vital to not only optimizing the character, but making sure that all Falcos wouldn't just be Mango clones trying a tricky offense. Ginger's a great example of a powerful new guard who pushes the Falco meta and more matches that PPMD mold. In Brawl, Falco's identity would change quite a bit, both due to a new game engine and to a new kit. In terms of his tilts and aerials, Falco received some of the biggest changes in Brawl. A lot of his moves were now spinny, multi-hit wing attacks. Although these changes would make Falco more his own character in Brawl, they'd also make him worse in the later games. However, in Brawl, Falco would be a strong, high-to-top-tier character. Brawl Falco didn't have the same combo game, but he got even better at playing Tricky at mid-range. His side special was now much faster and harder to interfere with, and his lasers were arguably even better than in Melee. The biggest buff of all would be to his down throw. Down throw could chain into itself for huge damage and even carry over the edge for a down air spike. Falco wasn't all down throws, though. He had a lot of strong and fast moves. In particular, his up smash worked great with the Dacus, or dash attack cancel up smash feature in Brawl. The best bird in Brawl would be Death. Short for, does everyone hate Falco? Death was one of the many prominent nationally ranked melee Falcos. At one point, he was pretty high ranked. Nowadays, we know him as Larry Lur. Larry Lur could go toe to toe with top Meta Knights like Mewtwo King. In the early Brawl meta, he made Falco look pretty strong, actually winning Apex 2010. However, as time went on, Meta Knight and Ice Climbers got optimized and stages got banned, Falco fell down the tier list a bit. Changes to Shine made it harder to break up the Ice Climbers and prevent the Zero to Death. And a great Meta Knight player had all the tools needed to counter and beat Falco. Despite the struggles, Falco's got a nice place in Brawl and is seen as one of the viable characters. He's still represented well in modern Brawl by Pelka. Any of the struggles Falco had in Brawl would look like a cakewalk compared to Smash 4. Falco was low mid at best and usually low tier in Smash 4. Falco's main strength in Smash 4 was his damage and his vertical combo game. He also had a few moves with good utility, like up smash, back air, and a few tilts. However, all of Falco's moves had a lot more end lag, which made him committal in a game that didn't really reward committing. His offense wasn't great either, and often relied on opponents making big mistakes. Not to mention his combos, while good, were clearly worse than what several other characters had. Then there was his very predictable, slow, and easy to interfere with recovery, his broken multi-hit moves that opponents would easily fall out of, and his fast fall speed which made him eat bigger punishes than he dished out. Perhaps worst of all, his blaster no longer auto-cancelled and was much slower. For the first time in Smash, it couldn't really control pace or neutral. Aside from the occasional upset, Falco didn't have many notable moments. 
Unlike other low tiers like Kirby, Falco didn't have a lot of appeal, nor did he get as meaningful buffs as Samus. While he had some nice techniques like down air cancels or forward air footstooling, these weren't practical enough to make him worthwhile for most players. Falco would remain popular for combo videos and content, but even then, he may have owed more to his reputation than what he really was. Larry Lur switched over to the much more rewarding space animal Fox, and that was maybe the most damning thing about Smash 4 Falco. The character was more unique than ever, and absolutely worse for it. Had he been closer to Fox's design like he was in Melee, he'd probably have been a lot better and more played. In Smash Ultimate, the bird didn't have much room to go but up. And up he'd go, just not that far. He's been pretty consistently mid-tier throughout Ultimate's early years. Ultimate's faster engine benefited him in some pretty key ways, notably with the rise of Foxtrotting. Falco is oddly slow in a full run, but his initial dash is pretty quick. He's also got some nice air acceleration, the highest jump in the game, and that classic fast fall speed that helps him combo. Falco is an even better combo character in Ultimate, where his up tilt is one of the game's better combo starters. His moves in general feel much improved, though some pieces, like Up Smash, were still wonky. Falco's super high jump, active aerials, and tempo changing lasers also make him a pretty potent edge guarder in Ultimate. He's held back by a few things, though. His approaches are still too linear and not that safe. His moves are still pretty punishable, and his game plan, land up tilt into cutscene, can be predictable. His disadvantage can also be a struggle. His specials aren't too hard to interfere with, and his stats make him easier to combo and juggle. And even though his recovery is good, it's very punishable if the Falco player isn't careful. So believe it or not, there are some cases in which Falco does not prefer the air. And worst of all, Falco struggles to kill. His back air is his best option, but it can be hard to hit given how high his jump is and how fast he falls, especially on the strong, small characters. Plus, his grabs could be DI'd so they don't kill. This flaw really hurt Falco because Falco is kind of advantage state the character. He's not that good at finding openings, just at pushing advantage. So, low kill power invalidated his main strengths. The good thing is, even without kill power, flashy combos and sick edge guards will win you a nice player base. Juice and Kofi in particular have put a lot of work into the character. Juice has taken some big wins off of PGR players like Leon, and he's done it by juicing Falco's late hits for as much combo potential as possible. Even more good news, in Patch 8.1, Nintendo leaned into Falco's identity and buffed his advantage state. His down tilt and down air are better openers, his side special is a better follow-up, and his up smash and down tilt kill more reliably. In the future, we might even see the bird soar to high tier. He's got talented mains, with Larry Lur potentially returning to the flock too. But even if he stayed mid-tier, he's at least closer to that legendary walking montage that he was in Melee. And he stands much better on his own two feet. Or talents. Or whatever's underneath those boots. This time, Falco's unique kit comes together pretty well, and Nintendo's actively trying to fix consistency issues. Still, with Fox being a borderline top tier, guys, I promise we'll update the website tier list, I, I, I promise. The question remains, were Falco's kit changes a good idea? Would the bird be better off if he matched his Corneria comrade, or would that only work in the Melee engine? Let us know what you think in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for more Smash history, meta discussion, and lessons.